السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلاح الله لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مدل له ومن يدل فلا هادي الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله Praise be to Allah We seek his help We seek his forgiveness We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one, having no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. يا أيها الذين أمنوا تاكوا الله حق تكاته ولا تموتون إلا وانتم مسلمون. You who believe, be mindful of Allah as His due, and make sure you devote yourselves to Him to your dying moment. يا أيها الناس, 
Utaku rabakum alladhi kalakakum min kalakakum kalakakum min nafsin wahida wa kalakaka minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisa'a wa taakula halladhi tas'aluna bihi wa laham inna allaha kana alaykum rakiba People, be mindful of your Lord who created you from a single soul and from it created its mate, and from the pair of them spread countless men and women far and wide. Be mindful of Allah, in whose name you make requests of one another. Beware of severing the ties of kinship. Allah is always watching over you. Amabad. Mayadihi Allahu fala mudillahu, wa ma yudlilhu fa. وَمَا يُدْلِلْهُ فَلَا حَادِيَ اللَّهُ إِنَّ أَزْدَاقُ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهُ وَأَحْسَانُ الْحَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ وَشَرُ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا وَكُولَ مُحْدَثَاتٍ بِدَا وَكُولَ بِدَاتٍ دَلَالَ وَكُولَ دَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارَ Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead him astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, sends astray, none can guide. The truest of the word is the book of Allah. And the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad wasallam. And the worst of things are those that are newly invented. And every newly invented thing is an innovation. And every innovation is going astray. And every going astray is in the fire. I say to my beautiful brothers and sisters on the most blessed day of Jumu'ah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You know, there is a man that Allah speaks about in the Quran, and he says that this man is a nation within himself. This is a very special man, a man who is loved by the Christians, he is loved by the Jews, and he is loved by the Muslims, and this is Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. A very special man. And all throughout the Quran, this man, this prophet, is constantly having a conversation with Allah. Constantly. All throughout the Quran, to the point where this man's life is so special, where Allah called him Khalilullah, the friend of God. Now, every last one of us who are here, if we had a wish, we would all wish to be the friend of God, the friend of Allah. But it's a lot of sacrifice that comes with that. It's a lot of pain that comes with that. And you know, maybe better than me, the sacrifices that Ibrahim had to make all throughout his life. But it was one specific time that I would like to bring to you today. And this is the time when he was getting ready to be thrown into what was called the biggest fire ever created. And what was his response? Hasbunallah wa ni'mah wa kill. Allah is sufficient as a disposer of my affairs. I want to stop there because, you know, usually when we think about the fire, we usually look at the fire as something of a punishment. But you know, the fire also has cleansing properties as well. You don't even really know who you are until you are in the fire. You know, for us who are parents, we try to protect our children, you know. Don't, don't touch the fire, don't do this, don't do that. But you know, there's certain experiences that we must have because with experience comes wisdom. You don't even know who your friends are until the fire comes, until the storm comes, until the gas tank is on E. That's when you know who your real friends are. That's when you know who truly loves you. And as you know the story, Prophet Ibrahim, he says, Husband Allah, what nitma will kill. As he is looking at the fire, he says, Allah is sufficient for me. 
Allah is sufficient at the disposal of my affairs. And at that very moment when he says that, look at what Allah does. He gets thrown into the fire, and Allah says to the very fire that he created to be hot, he said to the fire, be cool in a place of comfort. I want to stop right there, man. Man, that's, that's amazing that Allah turns the fire, the very fire that he created to be hot, he made it cool in the place of peace. You, you know those people, and some of you are those people, and some of us need to become it. I'm one of them, need to become it. Those people who are cool under pressure. It don't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter how bad the situation is. They're able to be calm under the fire. Allah takes this fire and makes it a place of cool. Many of us who are here right now, we are going through our own fires. I, you know what? I'm not going to even talk about you. I'm going to talk about myself. There's many fires that I've experienced in my life. Growing up in a country that continues to W.E.B. Du Bois, he talked about the double consciousness being black and American, but I had the triple consciousness being black, American, and Muslim. Some of you have the triple consciousness coming from the countries that you come from. In America, in some cases, look at you as an enemy when in reality you have built this country, this is your country. At what point do you see it as your country, as it belongs to you? You are the businessmen and women. You are the doctors. You are the attorneys. But there are some who still make you feel that you are a foreigner when in reality this country belongs to you. So Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, he is in the fire. But Allah tells the fire to be cool. You know what? No matter what you're going through in your life, as long as we remember, Hasbun Allah wa nitma wa kill, whatever fire you're dealing with, Allah will make it a place of cool and comfort for you. And you be in that fire, man, and you be chilling, man. You be chilling in the fire. You be relaxing in the fire. You be good in the fire. And that's what we want. We want that no matter what Allah brings to us, sometimes the struggles that we go through is not to destroy us. Sometimes the struggles is to make you stronger. You don't know how strong you are until you got to go through some pain. You don't know who really loves you. Alhamdulillah, boy, you, many of us, we've been married and we have families, right? But many of our families, boy, they stuck with us when we didn't have nothing. That's when you know it's real love. You can't just come to me when I got the nice car and a nice house. It's when I didn't have nothing that you know who's really standing by your side. It's during those storms that you know. Prophet Ibrahim, his whole life was about sacrifice. Allah was constantly, constantly putting him through struggles and sacrifice. Show your love. And Prophet Ibrahim would constantly show his love. And no matter what was happening, no matter what was going on in his life, he constantly went back to Allah. I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, that whatever your fire is, maybe you have a fire, maybe you're dealing with how you're going to pay for school, or the bills are due, or you're dealing with this, or you're dealing with that. Whatever fire you're dealing with, I'm telling you right now that as long as you have Allah, you have everything. And the true wealth is not about how much money you got because you can be a broke billionaire. The true wealth is being content. Are you content? My mother would always say, the, the true medicine is gratefulness. Doesn't Allah tell us in the Quran, be grateful and I'll give you more? Are you grateful for what you have? I recently came back from Senegal and I was spending time in Aswan and Egypt and I'm spending time in India in the slum villages of India and I recognize how grateful we are to be here. How grateful are we to be in America? But the question I have for you as we strive to follow the path of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he was always a person that was standing up for justice and fighting for those outside of his family and fighting for his community. I say to you today, 
If we truly want to help our brothers and sisters in Palestine, if we truly want to help our brothers and sisters in China, in India, in Yemen, in Saudi, in parts of Africa, in America, if we want to make a change, we have to make a change right here in this country. Imam Malcolm X, he said something very beautiful. He said, you are either at the table or you are on the menu. How long will the Muslims be on the menu? How long will we continue to be devoured by American politics because we are afraid to step up and be the leaders that Allah created us to be? Why are you afraid of the fire? Don't be afraid of the fire. Ask Allah to make the fire a place of comfort and peace. And I'm not talking about bombs and violence and all of that. I'm talking about making sure we vote. I'm talking about making sure that we hold politicians accountable. I'm talking about making sure that we use our resources and we take good care of our neighbors. I don't care how many Qur'ans they burn. They can burn all of the Qur'ans, but guess what? They will never remove the Qur'ans from out of our hearts. For every Qur'an you burn, we'll build more Muslim schools that will learn more Qur'an. You can't ever stop the growth of Islam in this country or wherever. For every Qur'an they burn, you make the intention that you send more money to Quran school to produce more of our children to learn this Quran. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Aisha radiallahu anha was asked, tell us about the Prophet. She said, he was the walking, talking Quran. Huh? Do we burn the Quran with our own actions? What type of neighbor are you? I know you all are good neighbors. You're good neighbors here. Talking about our cousins and us. What type of neighbor are you? We can no longer be a community that stands in a silo. We don't care about our next door neighbors and cares about what happens down the street. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that this ummah is one body. One body, and if one part of it hurts, all of it hurts. How do you feel when you see our brothers and sisters in China suffering the way they're suffering? Oh, because you're not Chinese. How do you feel about seeing the suffering of our brothers and sisters in India? How does that make you feel? To see the murder taking place in Saudi and Yemen and all across the, America, the, 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 the world where, 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 where Muslims are suffering, does it bother you? Or do we just go back to watching the NBA or watching football or watching whatever because we're in the comfort of America. We can no longer be sleeping giants. So Prophet Ibrahim, he was our example of always fighting for justice. And as Muslims, we must fight for justice. And the way that we fight for justice is that your joy is my joy, brother. Your pain is my pain, sister. And it's imperative that we stand up for one another. We ask Allah to bless us, to protect us, and strengthen us. I'm so honored to be here in Dallas. Uh, my name is Bashir Jones, originally from Brooklyn, New York. Came here from Cleveland, and now I am the director of PACE and community outreach for Mass. And the reason why I came here, I was brought here. I was a city councilman in the city of Cleveland. I was the first Muslim city councilman in the city of Cleveland. Ran for mayor, understood politics from a local, state, and national level. Listen to your brother Bashir for one second. Dallas has the opportunity to have an international impact. You want to help the Muslims in India? I know you do. You help them right here. You want to help the Muslims in China? You want to help 
the Muslims in Africa, you want to help all of humanity, you start right here in America. In America. We get out of this mindset that politics is just national and international. Politics is local. And every person that runs for office in our area, in our country, they should always have to come to the Muslims for support. And as Muslims, we need to have a Muslim agenda. What is our agenda locally? What is our agenda statewide? What is our agenda nationally? And what is our agenda internationally? Every other community understands that but us. Oh, but you don't, you don't want to listen? You don't hear what I'm saying? Okay, look at what's happening in our schools today. Look at curriculums being changed to fit a certain ideology. Why? Because people understand that if you want to make a change, you start with the children. And once you affect the children, the children are the next generation. So now the things that we used to say, I would never deal with, because it was infiltrated in the children from the cartoons to the movies to the video games to the music. Now the things that used to be sensitive, we used to be sensitive to, our children are desensitized to it. You know why? Because we're not showing up to school board meetings. We're not making, we're not, we have to be involved. Every single judge that wants to run needs to come through the Muslims. Every state representative, every council person, every mayor, every president, because you know what? Look at other communities. You don't need me to tell you. You can't even win the presidency without going to a certain community. You better go to the Jewish community. Let you not go to the Jewish community running for president and watch what happens. Why isn't that the case with our situation? Because we're not being involved. And Malcolm X said it very perfectly. You're either at the table or you're on the menu. That's the only two choices you got. So the question is, will we be at the table? And inshallah, mass, our goal is to really galvanize, to get involved. How do we do that? We must stop being in a silo. The same way you are, want to fight for Palestine as I do, the same way you want to fight for Yemen and Saudi Arabia, the same way you want to fight for every other country, we need you to have that same energy and fight for black and brown people right here in America who continue to be oppressed. That has to be your concern as well. Because if you don't stand up and fight for your neighbor, then your neighbor won't stand up and fight for you. That has to be because the Prophet وسلم, is the perfect example of what it meant to not just look after yourself, but to take care of the neighbor. We must take care of our neighbors. I close with this. There's a conversation between Allah and Shaitan, Audhu Billah, in the Quran, and Shaitan responds in this conversation, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ana khayrun minhu, khalaqtani min nar, khalaqtuhu min teen. He says, I am better than him. I was created from fire. He was created from dirt, from mud. The first racist was, was shaitan. So if we are racist towards each other, other cultures and other ethnicities and other whatever, we are standing on a satanic foundation. And you got mental health issues. Because if you hate anyone based upon something that you don't have no control over, you, you, there's something wrong with you. So this is the message that we have to spread. Wherever there are people who need us, we should be there for them. And Epic is a perfect example of the work that you are doing in this community. The amount of food that you give away, your book bag drives, all the work that you're doing. Epic is the example that masters should follow across the country. And it's imperative that we send this message and spread this message. So I say to you, brothers and sisters, may Allah bless your fire to be a place of coolness and comfort, man. I know you're going through things. Because guess what? We all got issues in here. And if you say you don't, then lying is your issue. We all going through something. 
So it's imperative that when you see one another and when you say assalamu alaikum, you say it and you mean it because you don't know what a brother is going through. You don't know what that sister is going through. Before you tell her to correct her hijab, make sure you're giving her some love because you, you don't know what she had to do to get here. Before you, before you correct that brother, make sure you give him some love. How you doing, brother? What's your name? How can I be of assistance to you? We forget one of the sunnahs, man, of the Prophet so Islam is smiling. We don't even smile no more. We got the Sour Patch face, man. You know Sour Patch candy? I remember I ate a whole bag of that one day. I couldn't, I couldn't taste for three days. You know what I mean? But it's the face like this. Salaamu alaikum, brother. It's like, what? you can't mean what you're saying. Not the way you're looking at me. So when you see each other, brother, smile. That brother that you gave salam to, he could be a second away of wanting to commit suicide. Yeah, there are Muslims who have wanted to commit suicide or who have committed suicide. Yes. Yes, Muslims are dealing with some of the same issues that you see other people dealing with. But the difference is, is that we got the medicine. Oh, man, this Quran, this Quran is a love story, man. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allah is constantly saying this in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful. Or do you have mercy with your brother and sister? Do you give excuses to your brother and sister? Or are you constantly looking for what's wrong? You never know what people are going through, man. Give each other love. And when you embrace me and you ask me how I'm doing, don't just say, Alhamdulillah, and just walk away. I mean, you ask me how I'm doing, let me tell you how I'm doing. And are you willing to assist me if how I'm doing is not good? Yeah. We brothers, man. And Allah brought us all together, man. All these beautiful faces. We come from all different places, man. We come from all around the world. And Allah brought us all together with Islam. And we bless. And even though we sit in America, which is like a fire, boy, oh boy, we ask Allah to bless be a place of calm and peace for us, man. Sure. May Allah bless you and protect you and strengthen you. May Allah guide us. May Allah protect our children. May Allah protect our children. May Allah bless us to be. May Allah bless us to be men. May Allah bless us to be men. Men that our children can look up to, and men that our women can be proud of. May Allah bless us to be men, like the prophets and the companions, to be strong, back straight, head up. May Allah protect our protect our women. May Allah bless our sisters for being the face of Islam and being the backbone of our community. May Allah bless them. Oh Allah, we ask you, oh Allah, we ask you to bless us to be, bless us to be in the presence of Muhammad, so I said. Bless us to be the neighbor of Muhammad, so I said, I'm genital for those. Oh Allah, bless us to live honorable lives, to die an honorable death, and to be raised with those who we have honored. Oh Allah, Rabbina atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa akina al Oh Allah, we ask you to give us the best of this life, the best of the hereafter, and save us from the hellfire. If I have said anything that has inspired you or motivated you, wallahi, it was from Allah. And if I said anything that was wrong, that was wrong, that is from the weakness of my own soul. May Allah forgive us all. I mean, Akim Salat. Inshallah, please fill in the corners, inshallah, as well as prayers if this is your, your final prayer, inshallah. Okay. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله إن شاء الله straighten your rules إن شاء الله pray with certainty pray with certainty pray with certainty Allahu Akbar
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تدليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بهجارة من سجيل فجعلهم كأصف مقول الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أهد الله السمد لم يلد ولم يلد ولم يقوله كفا أهد الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله